Um, did a good few years ago you made that bed, wasn't it? Or you produced the, the, the piece? Yes, yeah, 16 years ago. It's a long time. What, did, what does it mean to you now? Well, this morning I was installing it. And what's kind of shocking is that um, it was at Momart, at the warehouse. And everything from the bed is kept in, in, is in little tiny plastic bags and it's all out on a, on, a, a, you know, on a trestle table and it's like a forensic lab. And as I'm opening everything, it is kind of like half like a crime scene, but half like a kind of diary or, like, or nearly everything I'm touching is a million miles away from me now. So it's like a time, time capsule of my life, really. I found it a really sad thing to see that bed, you know. It was, it, was, it was a bed occupied by someone who was... And I think you were unhappy at the time, very unhappy, weren't you? Yeah, I was very, very unhappy. But also, I was ex at other, that period in my life, you know, was highs and lows. But was it... So when you see the, the bed, how odd that it's preserved. Such a mess is preserved so precisely. It's funny, isn't it? As, as an artist, when you're, when you're young and you're unknown and you're making a work of art, there is no way you ever think in your heart that it's going to stay around forever or for a long time. And especially something like the bed, which is so ethereal, it's just like almost like definitely like throwaway things, things that still shouldn't be existing. And when I, when I first showed the bed in Japan, um, this is something most people don't know, the Japanese um, customs people wouldn't allow wouldn't allow it in into Tokyo, into, into Narita Airport. And they had to, uh, we had to prove that I was an artist, that I was alive. That was the other thing. They wanted to know if I was still alive. And I think it was Nick Sirota at the Tate and the British Council had to send letters to say that I was a living artist in Britain and it was a work Why of didn't they want it in? Well, because at that time I didn't actually have, I didn't have much money for um, transport or whatever. And I actually put all of the stuff that was around the bed inside the suitcases. So I was well, all the old condoms and fag ends yeah, and all the rest everything, of it. Yeah, all in bags and everything, but inside the suitcases. So they were gonna just like destroy the blow the suit destroy the suitcases. So What did you think when of course it, it was it was a great co celebre, wasn't it? I mean the, the, the various people got very hot under the collar screaming, This isn't art. Yeah, but that's what, what did you think when you when when you heard that or read that? Well I just screamed louder and said, Yes it is. It's my art. And so with being an artist, if you have true conviction about what you're doing and you're doing it for the right reasons, no one can take that away from you. And I've proved that with the bed, just the testimony of time, the fact that it's still here, it's become even more iconic, it's more seminal, it has more presence, it has more presence now than it did then. Then people just thought I was like, like a silly young thing doing some shocking piece of art. But when you actually see the bed now, like this morning, it actually looks, when I saw it, no, I'm not saying that you saw my bed this morning or anything like that bed, or anyone else for that matter, but the bed. Um, it, it looks very sweet and very, like, almost harmless in a way. It's like almost, now it's definitely middle-aged. It's a middle-aged and it wants to just, it needs to be somewhere where it's appreciated. Does it remind you of a part of your life that, 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 that is very distant now? Yeah, say that again. I, I mean, when I was going through all these Do things, I mean... You know, there's condoms, contraceptive pills, cigarettes, vodka, stains, tiny underwear. All of these things that has to do with being a girl and coming through some kind of transition, or going through something, some cathartic state. I don't live like that anymore. Now you wear enormous knickers. <laughs> I do everything in a big way now. No, I'm everything. And, and here's this bed that's you know, it's, it's worth a fortune. Yeah, well. Isn't that odd? I think for some people, some people probably think that it's just like a joke, that it's worth that much money, and other people probably think it's not worth, it, it should be worth more. It depends on how we, how, what our perception of art is, what's important to us, what our values are. And the bed, I think, is iconic, it is seminal, and it did make a splash within art history. But I don't know how long for, but at the moment it's still... Still I mean, uh, how much did um, Charles Saatchi buy it for? Bought it for 150000 And And now it's being talked about as possibly going for a, a million or something. Who None, knows? You won't see any of that increase, presumably. No. But what, I mean, what, what do you feel? 
Um, I'm quite philosophical about my work being sold on, and Charles has really looked after it. I know he really adored the work. And the other thing is, when he does, if he does sell it at the auction, at Christie's, all of that money will be used to buy more art and to create a, educational programmes and everything. And I think that's a useful thing. I think that's really positive. And I've always had the attitude that if someone buys my art, they might actually literally own it to resell it but I will always own the idea and the essence of it mm. and it truly is mine. They can't, no one can ever take that away from me. That's why I'm on the programme tonight, talking to you, talking about my bed.